Hey guys, here is a quick video to show how you can turn your Bitmoji Classroom into a header and buttons to use in Canvas. Now you may be asking, why would I wanna do that? Well, there are some pitfalls to using a Bitmoji Classroom within Canvas. One of them being that if you are using the mobile Canvas student app, all of the interactivity of a Bitmoji Classroom is lost. So students are not able to click on the things that you may have linked within your Bitmoji Classroom. Another pitfall is if you are using this on a Chromebook or a laptop, and I have linked these pictures to the ELA portion of my course and the math portion of my course, but you'll notice when I click on these, they actually open in a new tab. So instead of opening in that same window, they open in a new tab. This isn't a huge deal, but when working with younger students, this could end up being a lot of tabs open for them and then them kind of getting lost in your Canvas course. Unfortunately, Canvas reads those as external links and there's really no workaround to having them read as internal links, which would keep them in the same window. But you'll see here in where I use it as a banner with buttons, when I click on these buttons, it does open right in my Canvas course. And then when I click home, it takes me right back to that page. So just something to kind of think about. The other pieces, and I am by no means an accessibility expert, but I have been told that these are not necessarily ADA compliant and screen readers have a difficult time reading Bitmoji classrooms. So uh, the next part of this video will show how you can take this and turn it into this. Okay, now to show how to do this. So I did get this template from our Facebook group. Um, I was able to get it from Jeanette, thank you. I used her sunflower one. So basically what I did is I just opened that right in Google Slides, and obviously this is a normal, typical Bitmoji classroom. From here, I then actually created a Google Draw. Um, you could do this in Google Slides as well, but I really like working in Google Draw. But I'm gonna do this from scratch so you guys can see what I did. So from here, I go to File, and I'm just gonna do a new Google Draw. And it automatically defaults to this size, but I obviously want it to be a banner size. So I'm gonna go into File, Page Setup, drop down to Custom. And my typical size for banners is 750 by 250. But for whatever reason lately, I have noticed that those are coming in blurry into Canvas. So I've actually been doubling the size of that. So I've been doing 1500 by 500. I know that seems super big, but that is the way that I get the most crisp, clean image in Canvas. And then I go ahead and apply, and you can see now I've got that nice rectangular size for a banner. But obviously we're going from a little bit squishier <laughs> rectangle to now a long, skinny one. So I actually start by copying just the background. I'm just gonna do um, Command C, I am working on a Mac. And then I'm gonna hop over to my drawing and I'm going to paste it. Uh, from here, I'm going to shrink it down so it fits right on my background and I'm going to center it. And I've got those nice red lines that show me when it's centered, perfect. And then I'm just gonna stretch it. Now, I'll be honest, this doesn't work on all backgrounds. Some of them get to look a little bit wonky, but luckily this one, uh, looks pretty good when it's stretched. And actually, I just noticed it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. There we go. So here now I have that room in my Google drawing. From here, I am now going to select all, but unselect my background, and I'm going to group them together. Then I'm going to copy them and paste them into my drawing. And then, of course, resize them. I like to go ahead and press shift when I'm resizing, so that way it... Uh, makes it so that the aspect ratio stays the same and things don't get kind of wonky and skewed. And once I have this sort of how I want it, oops, then I will go ahead and ungroup. And this time I'm not going to be using that ELA and math, so I'm going to delete those out. And then I basically just start moving stuff around so that way it fits in the room a little bit better. So this is the part that's a little more time consuming. But after, I basically just took all those little pieces and moved them around, spaced them out, and then now this is my new banner. So then from here, I go ahead and do File, Download as PNG. And these are the buttons that I created. So I basically used the sunflower from here and then just added some text and a little background color. Now I did leave a border around my buttons and you'll see why this is important in just a second. So now I'm gonna hop back over here and show you guys how I created this. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit my page, my home page. 
And then I am going to select all and just blow it all away so that way you guys can see what I'm doing. So now from here, I like to make this guy a little bit bigger so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna go ahead now and upload that banner image, which is nice. I am working in the new rich content editor, but it's nice I now have that drag and drop. And then I'm gonna submit it. I am gonna real quickly also show you what it looked like when I had just it 750 by um, 250. I think this was my original one. So let me, I'm gonna insert that as well and you can just kind of see the difference. Um, what that sort of looks like. So this is when I did not double it in size. So you can see it's just a little bit fuzzier, um, not quite, quite as crisp and clean of an image. So that is why I doubled the size in Google Draw. Um, now, and did the same thing with my buttons as well. I typically do a 225 by 75, but for my buttons, I um, also doubled that size. I am working in pixels, by the way. Um, so I doubled the size of my buttons as well, so they would come in nice and crisp and clean. Uh, all right, so then from here, I then could type in some text if I want, whatever you want to say here. Uh, I like to center my text, and then obviously you could kind of bump up the sizing. I do like to use a bigger size when working with elementary students, and then obviously bold or however you want to do that. This would obviously be a lot nicer text here. And now many of you are working in a table, and I will show an example of what this looks like on my phone when I do it in a table and when I don't. I have actually become a fan of not putting my buttons in tables. And I mentioned earlier that I left a border around my buttons and you're now going to see why. So let me go ahead and bring those buttons in. I'm gonna upload those images that I downloaded from Google Draw. So I've got an ELA button, I'm gonna submit. And then I'm not gonna do anything. Um, I will note though that my cursor is already centered. That is a recommendation I have. So center your cursor and then bring those images in. So now I'm gonna go ahead and bring in math as well, right next to that yellow button. And then I'm gonna do the same thing and bring in a parent button as well. I'm a big fan of threes, so that's why I like to have at least three buttons on my page. That's a little wonky when there's only two. Now you'll notice it did bump that to the next line, which I don't want, which I know is a reason why many of you work in tables, but all I'm gonna do is go in here and just adjust this size. So I'm gonna adjust this to 225, and I'm gonna make this one 225 as well, and this one too. And now you can see that it has put those all on the same line. And because I had that border, I have a nice spacing in between my buttons. And then to make them actual links, all I have to do is click on the image, select the link, and then choose my course file that I want to link it to. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for math. And I haven't actually made a parent page yet, so I'm not going to link that. Uh, where's my math? There it is. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click Save. And then you always wanna test it out on Home. This defaults to showing it in page view, but Home has some extra stuff on the right-hand side. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Home. And now you can see what my home page looks like. I've got, again, my nice banner, and now I have these buttons that when clicked, open right in my Canvas course. Now I do wanna show what this looks like on my phone. So here it is when it's in a table, you can see the buttons are super tiny. But when I do not have the buttons in a table, then it puts them vertically, which isn't a big deal because I do feel like it at least keeps the size so my students can easily click on them from a mobile device. So hopefully this helps show how you can take that Bitmoji classroom that you may have been using, very quickly change it into a, a banner to use on your homepage that will just have a little bit better functionality within Canvas.